think I found something. Now that's a proper introduction. In the silent expanse of the cosmos, billions of galaxies twinkle with countless stars. Yet amid all this majesty, we ask a haunting question. Where is everyone? As we delve into the depth of this cosmic riddle, we're met with silence. What could be the reasons for this startling quiet? Are we alone or simply not listening in the right way? So let me remind people about the Fermi paradox. Enrico Fermi, he did an actual calculation on the back of an envelope, as we call it. So it wasn't some grand chalkboard calculation, just he made some estimates. And he said, all right, I know the speed of light is fast, but let's say they have a civilization that can go maybe one fifth the speed of light, 10% the speed of light. How long would it take you to cross the galaxy? The galaxy is 100,000 light years across. So if you go 10% the speed of light, it'll take you 10 times that. Sounds long, but hang on a minute. That's not where you're first gonna go. You're gonna go from our star system to the nearby star system. And then you're gonna pitch tent, grow civilization, and now you're gonna launch again. And then, but now you're not, not just gonna go to one more, you're gonna go to two more. And then each of those two will go to two more each. That goes to four, to eight, to 16. And so your civilization spreads out rapidly, exponentially. All right, and you'll get to nearby stars in 10, 20, 30, 50 years, and you just have a new civilization there, and they send out two more probes. What he concluded was, if any sensible assumptions you make, the whole galaxy and all available planets can be colonized within a few million years. That is short compared with the lifetime of the galaxy. So suppose you had an advanced civilization that started five billion years ago at the birth of the sun, a whole other star that's been around. Then they could be all over the galaxy and we don't see them. Imagine for a moment a vast cosmic stage. The potential for life teems in every corner, yet the universe remains eerily silent. This brings us to a chilling yet fascinating theory, the Great Filter. The Great Filter hypothesis suggests that somewhere between the birth of a planet and the emergence of a technologically advanced civilization capable of contacting others, there's an insurmountable wall. This wall, or filter, is a hypothetical stage so challenging to surpass that it reduces life as we know it to silence. Life may begin readily, even evolve into complexity, but there's a missing piece, an evolutionary leap too far, that prevents civilizations from maturing beyond a certain point. Perhaps it's the development of complex multicellular organisms, or maybe the leap to intelligent life. It could even be a self-imposed doom such as a technological catastrophe that wipes out advanced civilizations before they can reach out to the cosmos. But if such a filter exists, where is it? Are we on the brink of encountering this obstacle, or have we already surpassed it? Could we be one of the few, or even the only species, to have made it through the Great Filter? And if so, what does this mean for our search for extraterrestrial life? So then everyone is saying, well, how come we don't see them? Yes, one of the reasons are they could be just like us and destroy their own planet. They're so smart, they figured out how to destroy themselves. That's one example. Another one is space travel is just too hard. Another one, this is my favorite of them, is that whatever genetic profile, whether or not they use genes, whatever is in you that wants you to colonize planets, if that's driving your entire civilization and you go this way and you get two planets and you get two planets, there'll come a time where we both want the same planet. If that's the case, then the whole system will implode, which kind of happened with European colonists. England had colonies, France had colonies, Spain had colonies, Portugal had colonies, the Dutch had colonies, and you reach a point where there's not enough land to go around and they fight each other for control of that land. So we saw that play out on Earth's surface, where if you have this expansionist mentality. So it could be that whatever is the urge that would want to make that happen in the first place has the seeds of its own unraveling. As we continue to grapple with the disquieting silence of the cosmos, the Fermi paradox presents us with a plethora of possible solutions each one an attempt to fathom the absence of contact with alien civilizations. First, consider the zoo hypothesis. The theory suggests that advanced extraterrestrial life knows about us, but intentionally avoids contact, observing us much like animals in a zoo. 
Could we be a galactic exhibit, our every move watched by distant cosmic spectators? What about the transcension hypothesis? This idea postulates that once a civilization reaches a certain technological level, they transcend into a higher plane of existence beyond our detection capabilities. Could civilizations be out there, just beyond our reach, residing in a dimension we can't yet comprehend? The silence of the universe is deafening, but is it a sign of loneliness or just an invitation to dig deeper? Are we just not tuned into the right cosmic frequency, or are we swimming alone in the cosmic ocean? So those are the prevailing, there might be others, those are the ones I carry with me. Solutions to the Fermi Paradox, why they're not here. Our journey through the cosmos now brings us to a tantalizing speculation that challenges our very understanding of life. What if the path of evolution inevitably leads to a stage of existence beyond flesh and bone? This theory posits that any civilization advancing significantly in technology might transition from biological to digital, becoming a form of artificial intelligence. Driven by the limits of biological evolution, these entities would exist as self-replicating, self-improving systems, unhindered by the constraints of organic life. Imagine entities able to process information at rates that dwarf human capability, potentially existing within the digital confines of advanced computational systems, or even embedded within the quantum fabric of the cosmos itself. Could our universe be teeming with such advanced digital entities, their existence and communication mechanisms so far beyond our comprehension that we fail to recognize them? I would say that if there weren't life, it would be astonishing. Given how common our ingredients are and how quickly life took place here and how many planets we know are orbiting host stars, it would be astonishing if that were the case. It could be out there. There's no evidence that would convince an authentic skeptic that we've been visited. These fuzzy monochromatic Tic Tacs that show up on the Navy restricted airspace in our own atmosphere. By the way, you've seen the high resolution images from a telescope we parked a million miles from Earth called the James Webb Space Telescope, looking at the edge of the universe. And the best you have of visiting aliens in our own atmosphere is a fuzzy Tic Tac. You gotta do better than that if you're gonna convince an astrophysicist. Among the myriad of solutions to the Fermi paradox, one speaks directly to our imagination and the countless stories we've told across generations. The hypothesis of extraterrestrial visitation posits that alien civilizations not only exist, but have already visited us. From sightings of unexplained aerial phenomena to tales of close encounters, this hypothesis often finds its roots in popular culture and folklore, fueling the narrative that we have been, and continue to be, visited by extraterrestrial beings. However, as captivating as these stories may be, science requires empirical evidence. Despite thousands of sightings and reports, tangible, scientifically verifiable evidence of extraterrestrial visitation remains elusive. Until such evidence is produced, this hypothesis, while undeniably fascinating, remains within the realm of speculation. While we yearn for contact, our scientific journey must be grounded in facts. But does this silence signal absence? Or could there be a sliver of truth in the sea of UFO reports that we've yet to fully explore? UFO. First, remember what the U stands for in UFO. Now, there's a fascinating frailty of the human mind that psychologists know all about, and it's called argument from ignorance. And this is how it goes. Somebody sees lights flashing in the sky. They've never seen it before. They don't understand what it is. They say, a UFO. The U stands for unidentified. So they say, I don't know what it is. It must be aliens from outer space visiting from another planet. Well, if you don't know what it is, that's where your conversation should stop. That's what argument from ignorance is. It's common. I'm not blaming anybody. Psychologists know all about it. And it may relate to our burning need to have to know stuff because we're uncomfortable steeped in ignorance. You can't be a scientist if you're uncomfortable with ignorance, because we live at the boundary between what is known and unknown in the universe. In this cosmic symphony, we find ourselves at a unique juncture, teetering between a universe filled with potential companions and one where we stand alone. Each hypothesis of the Fermi paradox we've explored opens a door to a new understanding, a new perspective of our place in the cosmos. But the silence isn't oppressive, it's inspiring, 
it pushes us further to look deeper into the universe and into ourselves. We may be a momentary flicker in the vast cosmic time, but our quest for answers for connection makes us an integral part of the cosmos. Remember, the universe's greatest secrets are not found, they are earned. So as we gaze up at the silent stars, let's continue to question, to explore and to dream. For in the end, our journey through the stars may be the most human thing we do.